Games rated E to M. Welcome to Nintendo Power Podcast. This episode, we talk with the developers of Shovel Knight to unearth the stories behind one of the biggest indie games of all time. My name is Chris Slate, and joining me today is Sean Velasco from Yacht Club Games, who was the director of Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Hi, Sean. Hey, how's it going? Happy to be here. Great. And also Sandy Gordon, who is one of the pixel artists on the game. How are you? Hey there, I'm pretty well. Great. Well, thanks both of you for coming on the show, and I'm very excited to have you here. Um, I'm a huge fan of Shovel Knight, and in fact, some of our regular guests have kind of teased me uh, because I always find a way to mention the game just about every episode. <laughs> nice. Thank uh, you. So it's a special treat for me to be able to talk to you guys. And, and find an official reason to just talk about nothing but Shovel Knight for a while. Yeah, that's what we love to do. We love talking about all things Shovel Knight and Nintendo, so we're, we're definitely excited to talk to you. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So it uh, turns out there's obviously a lot more uh, fans of the game than just me. We went out on social media and asked all the other Shovel Knight super fans what they'd like to ask you. And we had a great, great response. And in fact, they had so many good questions that I'm just going to turn this interview over to them and run through as many of their questions as possible. Whoa. Sound good? Exciting. All right. Sounds good. We love cool. answering questions. All right. Well, really quickly, um, just for anyone who may not already be super familiar with Shovel Knight, uh, the game really is a love letter to classic side-scrolling action games. And it looks and feels retro, but also has a lot of very modern features. Um, I believe the original game launched in 2014. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's right. In 2014. Yeah, like that's a long time ago now. Yeah, and on, it was on, available on pretty much every platform. Uh, I've personally owned it, I think, at this point on, on Nintendo 3DS, Wii U, and now Nintendo Switch. And, um, and since 2014, you've released three big new campaigns and some other DLC. Uh, and I believe it's, it's over about two and a half million copies across all platforms now of the game. So it's I believe we've we've passed the kind of indie sensation phase now, and it's just a legitimate, um, massive, massive title. Yeah, just a straight up sensation. Uh, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And um, and last month with the launch of the King of Cards campaign and the Shovel Knight Showdown fighting game mode, um, you finally finished the last of the content, and it's all been collected now into Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, which I was very happy to get uh, in physical form from my Nintendo Switch. Yes. And um, but if we could just go back for a minute to the very beginning. Um, our first question from TYJC, uh, you know, he wants to know when was the idea of Shovel Knight first envisioned? Like how did that, the whole thing first start? Wow. Uh, well, Shovel Knight was, even though it was released in 2014, it was in development during all of 2013. And I think the original, original idea for Shovel Knight was back in December of 2012, and really, we just wanted to make a, yeah, like an 8-bit side-scrolling platformer that were just like all the games that we loved playing as kids when we were growing up on the NES, uh, you know, from Super Mario Bros. 3 to Mega Man and uh, Castlevania, just like all these, all these great classic games, games that were easy to get into, games that were all built around one game mechanic. And uh, games that just had like a lot of fun and personality and were just, yeah, just easy to get into. And so we thought, hey, what are we going to build our game around? Uh, there's, a, there's a Zelda game, uh, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. And in that game, Link has a down thrust that you can hop on enemies. And it just has like a really good sword fighting mechanics. It really, in that game, you really feel like you're battling. And in Shovel Knight, we wanted to do something kind of similar. Uh, so we thought, well, what if you could, what if you could plunge down on enemies with with your weapon? What if you could flip an enemy over and and then attack their soft underbelly? What if you could dig through dirt and dig through blocks? And so we were talking about all these mechanics for a platformer, and we realized as we were talking about them that we were describing like the actions that a shovel would do. And so we're like, well, why don't we just make the why don't we make the game about a character that has a shovel and so that's kind of how shovel knight was born it, the, all the knight uh stuff all kind of came afterwards but that core mechanic of having like a down thrust and being able to flip over enemies and stuff that's like where shovel knight came from we at the yacht club games we really are pretty gameplay first so like first we come up with the idea for the game mechanic and then after that we'll start to build out all the characters and world and everything else that happens in the game and if you know a lot of the references to the games that inspired uh, Shovel Knight, you can kind of 
see those inspirations peppered throughout the game, right? Like, yeah. like, like you just said, Sean, like the shovel axe sort of like links uh, down thrust with his sword yeah, and then like- A little bit, right? the, well, Yeah, like just, you know, inspiration peppered throughout, like the eight bosses for Mega Man being kind of a theme sure. spread throughout uh, the bosses in Shovel Knight. Yeah, like we wanted to take all these things from, from the games that we loved and just build them out and iterate on them and bring it to a new audience that maybe hadn't seen these games in a really long time. Or I mean, even like young people that had never played games like this before. Uh, back, you know, back in 2013, we were kind of uh, a little worried maybe that that kind of gameplay wouldn't fly, right? Like it, it was, it was uh, a little bit of a risk, but luckily it, people really seem to take to it. And like, even if you haven't played NES games before, uh, Shovel Knight really ended up being something that a lot of people could pick up and play. And so it was just like really cool to bring that kind of gameplay to people. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the things that that defines some of the most memorable NES games, and, and I think um, Shovel Knight really represents this as well, is kind of what you guys touched on a little earlier in that it, it seems like it, it's very simple. Like, the you know, the pick up and play quality of the game is, is, is you, you know, you can get right to it. But then... It's how when you enter each kind of portion of a new level, the, the level design is kind of making you use those same core abilities in different new ways. So it almost becomes like a little bit of a puzzle game. I mean, the action, the focus is very much always on action, but you're constantly kind of learning how to do a lot with with what maybe at the beginning seemed like a very little. Right. Yeah. And that's what is so great about games from the NES era is like you could understand what your character could do immediately. Right. Like Mario has like he can run and he can jump and he can break blocks from underneath and he can hit enemies from above. And once you start thinking about that jump, you look at the whole game and you're thinking, well, how can I use my jump? What will happen if I jump on that? What will happen if I jump up into this? And so from that it just lets you use all of your all of your mechanics in a really organic way and so with shovel knight it was like the same thing yeah you're totally right the world is like what provides the texture a lot of the a lot of the fun about designing levels for a game like this too is working around those core mechanics and the you know the base mobility and those limitations yeah, those right limitations, like, exactly. yeah that's what makes it that's what makes it fun and like every time there's something new you can you can take a look at it and say well how, how am i going to approach this and it's uh, hopefully we can turn it on its head a little bit every time. And especially with the subsequent games after Shovel of Hope, there's like even a further twist on how those objects are used with like new characters. So it's all just like a big it's like a big soup of gameplay. Yeah, absolutely. And, and going again back to the beginning here, um, of course, I think the game famously started as, as a Kickstarter um, project. So can you explain, you know, what Kickstarter kind of brought to the table and, and how that process went? Uh, sure. Well, back in, yeah, back in 2013, when we ran the Kickstarter, that was kind of a new way to, to fund a game. Um, and generally you would go through a publisher or you'd make a game like in a big company, but like the uh, more, more and more indie companies, indie studios like us, were starting to put more games out, and yeah, went to Kickstarter. Uh, we we put our total up there, and it was starting to rise. We had, we had gone about halfway through our Kickstarter, and then it really, really started to take off when we went to I think PAX PAX East in in 2013. I was, and, I was there as a student at the time. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, oh, I remember dude. coming to your table and seeing. Shovel Knight in its early uh, phase and having Whoa. a lot of fun playing the demo. Well, that's amazing. Okay, yeah. That <laughs> was didn't, cool. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and so we got a lot of really great feedback. The game became more and more popular. We uh, we ended up f overfunding by more than three times the amount that we had originally set out. And we hit a bunch of stretch goals that ended up later. Like that's where all these DLC campaigns and all this extra stuff all came from. It was from people being excited about the idea of Shovel Knight. And I mean, what's great about Kickstarter is you have a community of people that are already automatically built into your game, right? Because they're they're coming in, they're putting in a little bit of money, hoping to see something cool come out of it. And there's like an immediate investment, like emotionally as well. Even literally built in in some cases. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. We got to... Some of, some of the backers helped design some of the characters in the game. Yeah. There's a whole uh, set of levels dedicated to... Uh, 
like portraits of the backers that were created. Yeah, right. The Hall of Champions. The Hall of Champions. Yeah. yeah. So it was really like a, it's like a community effort. Yeah. And by having by having fans and supporters there from the beginning, we could bounce ideas off of them. And just having that built-in community was like amazing. And they've continued to stick with us yeah, and to stick, this day. Yeah, even yeah. now. So there, there are people that, I don't know, jump into our game streams or whatever, and they're, they've been there from the beginning. And it's just like really, it's like a really amazing thing. Shovel Knight has the best fans for sure. Yeah, it's like <laughs> really amazing. Now, one of the things resulting from the Kickstarter was that, like you said, you, um, the Kickstarter did so well that you met a lot of stretch goals and that led to a lot of additional content over the, the following years. Yes. Um, you t you're talking about um, three major um, additional campaigns with Plague of Shadows starring Plague Knight and then Spectre Knight and Spectre of Torment. And then most recently, um, just a month ago, King Knight and King of Cards. Yeah. Plus you're talking about the Shovel Knight Showdown fighting game mode and other additions like body swap mode and, and, and things like that. So, was that process had ever, did, was there any point where you thought, wow, um, we really bit off uh, quite a bit there, you know, yeah. that, that you had to keep working on the game for that long? Definitely. I mean, of, of course, if, if we hadn't funded so well or if the game hadn't been successful, I'm sure that those campaigns would have been a lot shorter. Right. Like right. like originally we had wanted to make just an alternate playable character. Right. So as opposed to playing a Shovel Knight, then in Plague of Shadows, you would just play like as Plague Knight. But it would be going through all of Shovel Knight's levels and it would be like relatively identical to the original. Um, but as we developed the games, it became clear that, well, our ambitions grew as well. And since we were able to take that extra time to make the coolest thing that we could, we just went went all out. So Plague of Shadows is like, that was the turning it point. It was a step in that direction. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then the subsequent games went even further. Yeah, definitely. And so like Spectre of Torment is like really, really its own game with like all new mechanics and so many new stage designs. And King of Cards is just so robust. Yeah. Like that King of Cards is pretty much us saying like, all right, what is what are all the things that we wanted to put in the previous games that we weren't able to? and Let's put put it all in here oh, yeah. in like a really cool, cohesive, wacky, fun package. Yeah, it's like really massive. Like King of Cards is bigger. It's a it's the biggest one yet. And there's the card game Joustus, which is like this whole mini game that's integrated throughout King of Cards. And there's more levels in King of Cards than there are in any of the other campaigns. And like the story's bigger. The script is like twice as big. It's just like an enormous game. But I don't know. I think we're all really proud of it. it yeah. It's like really super cool. And seeing everyone playing it finally after we've worked on it for so many years, uh, seeing everyone's reactions has been really super satisfying. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, Shovel Knight Showdown as well. I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, forget about that either, because having a four-player platform fighting battle game. I don't know. Originally, we had just thought it was going to be really, really simple and straightforward. Yeah. And just like everything that we do here, it kind of got more and more complex, and we added more and more cool characters, characters more stages. We have like 20, 20 playable characters, yeah. thirty something stages, a bunch of items yeah. that are like brand new, and, very and fully uh, formed. yeah. So it's like, and there's a there's a story mode for every character with like a beginning, middle, and end, and everyone has a rival, and all the stories all interweave throughout one another. I feel like Showdown was kind of our our send off for the Treasure Trove saga of games as a whole right it's like there are so many stories and so many characters that we didn't get to really dive as deeply into as we would have liked to like given you know an ideal amount of time and money so we you know within the story mode for each of the showdown characters we we're like all right you know what what is like the the smallest viable story we can give yeah, to our fans tell. and tell and yeah right like treasure knight and propeller knight right. and tinker knight those guys didn't get their own campaigns so we got to treat those story modes as like their own little mini campaigns yeah. and i think that was pretty satisfying for not just for us but for fans if you if you were a fan of those characters then you got to have a little bit right. a little bit of a thing of like what the campaign would be like what would it be like to play as polar knight well now you can now find you know. out now you know and he's like viable he's like actually viable I, that's i'm proud of that too it's like these giant characters you could play as and they're fun and like tiny characters are fun to play as like i can't believe like polar knight works but polar knight versus baz yeah wow but they, yeah but they do so much beef on screen <laughs>
When you were developing uh, kind of the way that those characters work, characters that people hadn't been able to play before Shovel Knight Showdown, was there any characters where you, you thought, man, this actually works so good. I really wish we were doing, we could do like a whole campaign just for this guy. All of them probably. Yeah, yeah. They're all so cool. <laughs> yeah. This, I, for me, it's uh, Treasure Knight. Yeah. Like he, he can use his anchor and zip across the screen. You can fire it horizontally or vertically. And then after you fire the anchor, you can like follow behind it and it just really lets you zip around. Um, like swimming through the air. It'd be such a cool mechanic to use in a game, right? Like, sure. yeah, it mm-hmm. would just be like so fun to be able to zip around and do, you know, treasure, treasure of the deep. <laughs> I mean, like there are characters like Tinker Knight, who's kind of a more technical character to play as because he's got, a you know, a huge toolkit, vast array of of uh, things he can throw out at you and surprises in store. You've got Propeller Knight who can like hang in the air for long periods of time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mr. Hat is one of my favorite just because his hat swapping gives some completely new mechanics and mobility. It's like you're playing as a second character almost. So yeah. it's like, what would a campaign be like as Mr. Hat? Whoa. Yeah, it'd be. Yeah, it's hard to. It's really hard to pick. But oh, yeah. you know, truth be told, I think we're all, we're all glad that Treasure Trove we like did a good job with it. It's like in a box, and now we can like. Put a nice bow on it. Yeah, and be like, all right, time, yeah. to, time to move on to something new. Yeah. Well, kind of following on on that same topic of um, kind of the different characters, uh, Eric wrote in and asks, uh, all eight knights in the Order of No Quarter have great designs and personalities, so what made the team decide on Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, and King Knight for the expansions? How did you settle on those three characters? Well, those were actually decided during the Kickstarter. Uh, those were those were some stretch goals that we had had, and so the the line in the stretch goal said, "Playable boss character," and that that was it, right? And then it was like playable mm-hmm. boss character one, playable boss character two, playable boss character three. And so since we hit all those stretch goals, then we said, "All right, we're going to do them all," and we held a little vote on social media to determine who the winners would be. So those were actually determined by the Kickstarter backers. Yeah, even though there was no very little information about any of those characters, because this was before even uh, original Shovel Knight came out. So without knowing too much about any of the characters, basically just based on the visual design and and a few. uh, Like a little blurb, right, about each character. Like, you know, Mole Knight, you know, has this sort of personality and temperament. And this is, there's maybe some ideas that uh, we toss into a potential game if he was chosen. Right. It's like Plague Knight is all about explosions and blowing stuff up and being crazy. So his campaign would probably be mm-hmm. about him bursting all over the place and throwing bombs and exploding. Specter Knight's like a cool dark grim reaper. And so his campaign would be like a macabre dark tale of macabreness. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Then and then we just built on all of it. Uh, we built them all out after that. We we really had no idea what all of them were going to be like until we sat down to do them. I think you can even still go to the Kickstarter page and, and read all of those. Right. right? That yeah. are, were available during the vote. Yeah. We did. We did like little speeches. Like I remember uh, like David D'Angelo, uh, who was who was also like he did a big. Uh, he did a big post on King Knight, and he's like, "Vote for King Knight for, 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 for the Dignity." <laughs> Whoa, campaign. David was vying for yeah, King Knight yes, at the time. Yeah, he's wow. like, "I'm a huge King Knight fan." So Bias. everyone, yeah, everyone had their different characters that they wanted to have in there. Who was yours, Sean? Uh, I drew. I drew a little thing of the three characters. I think there was Plague Knight. I wanted Plague Knight. And uh, I, all I remember is playing that. Yeah. That's who I wanted most. And, and hey, sure enough. Well, you're in luck. They cho- yeah, they chose him. And now that everything's all said and done, do you each have your own personal favorite uh, campaign? Oh, boy. That's really tricky. Kind of like picking your children, I know, but. Yeah. Uh, favorite campaign or yeah, favorite night? I, for me, I, I guess for me, my favorite night and campaign probably go hand in hand because I actually started at Yacht Club about two and a half to three years ago at the onset of King of Cards and Showdown's development. So I was like really hands-on King Knight, uh, animated him a bunch, and I definitely have a, a soft spot for his story and his design. So King of Cards. So King of Cards. King of Cards. That's, that's yeah. my pick. Yeah. I, th- I agree. I also think King of Cards is the, is the best campaign that we put out. It's like so, it's just like so big and epic. Joustus is such a cool card game. King Knight is like such a, ugh. he's just like, su- he's just <laughs> yeah. like such a funny, but like horrible character. And the, he's a lovable goon. Yeah. You want to like wring his neck, but you also want to give him a hug because maybe yeah. that's all he needs. Yeah. Right? yeah. He needs more than a hug. He needs more than a hug. <laughs> 
uh, yeah, to, needs to be sent to his room. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, King of Cards is like such a great campaign. As as far as my favorite knight, I I think it's probably still Plague Knight. I guess his his like mm. his uh, outer bluster, but kind of like shyness on the inside, and the tale that he goes through of like being vulnerable is something that I just think is like that's a cool campaign with themes that I could really relate to. So I like. Yeah, I like Plague Knight Very a lot. Charming. Yeah. Yeah, without giving anything away, I think he, he uh Plague of Shadows might have my favorite ending, like the very the very final yeah, moment yeah. I thought was really really kind of nice and surprisingly touching. Yeah. That was one of that was one of the very first sets of imagery that we had for Plague of Shadows was the ending. Yeah. yeah. Without giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go play. Yeah. It. Yeah. Well then what did you have I mean one of the things that people I think really like about um all of the campaigns is this kind of um, cohesive world with like a lot of reappearing um, NPCs and, you know, you guys over time really built up this kind of cool, fun mythology behind the whole world of Shovel Knight. Um, so um, I wonder, you know, actually it was um, a, a, a fan named October Fleshed, at least on Twitter, that's their handle, uh, wanted to know what your favorite character was specifically to write for. Oh, to write for? That's a good question for yeah. you, Sean. Uh, well, I don't know. We all sat in the writer's room and had a lot of had a lot of discussions about like every line of everything that was going to happen for the whole game. Um, My favorite's Croker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. These are, so good. are uh, a frog that only speaks in puns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a we had a big spreadsheet of puns that we like wrote them all down because right. we had to narrow it down to be like 20 puns. They're all groaners. They're all pretty lame, but yeah. they like <laughs> the ones that made us laugh the most probably made it into the game. Yeah. Wasn't wasn't one of the optional feats to actually sit there and listen to every one of his puns? Yes. Yes, it was. We wanted to yeah, make I sure we wanted that. to make sure that everybody went through it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, I really liked writing for Specter Knight because he like thinks he's so cool and awesome, and like he's like he's like so dark and mysterious, but like really on the inside he's like a big dork. And uh, I don't know hmm. the the idea of being like too cool for school was, but also try making him lovable and not too much of an edge lord yeah. was like that was like really really fun. It was a good challenge, and I, I think the humor in Specter Knight really comes through well. Yeah, despite despite the coldness of Specter Knight's hard i think a little bit of warmth seeps through every now and then yeah he's a big softy really yeah. on the inside yeah yeah i like that one too in fact if i had to pick my own favorite campaign it, it really changes constantly and is usually the one i played most recently oh cool so maybe maybe king of cards but i remember for the longest time not being able to decide if i liked um specter knight's campaign or the original um shovel knight uh campaign the best but um yeah, anyway, so there's a lot of good stuff there to choose from. But kind of to that point, Bra asks, um, he says, I haven't played Shovel Knight yet. Which game do I buy first? I've been meaning to pick this up. I just don't know where to start. So for a Shovel Knight newbie, now that there's so many campaigns out in there, you could play them in, in the order that they were released. You could play them in kind of the chronological order if you go by the storytelling. Right. Do you guys have any any preference or recommendation? Oh boy. Uh, well, I'm, that's like so much of the fun of it, bruh. Like, I think the real answer is there's no right answer, right? There's yeah. no definitive order. Yeah. It really depends on what you're looking for and what kind of experience you want yeah. to get out of it. But I think, I mean, Spectre of Torment is like so concise. Yeah. It's I think that's, that's a really good introduction. It's really like easy to get into. But like also just the original shovel of hope campaign is is so much fun and the and the co-op and shovel of hope is That's also true. like amazing maybe i maybe i'd recommend to do shovel of hope first and then do, do plague of shadows then specter of torment and king of cards and then on your second playthrough then you could do it in chronological order yeah. right so you'd start with then you're getting like the king, most out of the story yes right and you could really go back and see everything because some of it would some of it might be lost on you if you if you did it if you actually did it with the prequels first yeah, because sure. just because that's like really not the way that we that we wrote it yeah there are a lot of like nods to the other campaigns in some of the later ones um especially as far as like the timeline is concerned like what what's going on with this character during the story of like this boss campaign right so it, it's like helpful to know, to have the knowledge of that stuff going into it i would say yeah so maybe so maybe on your second playthrough, do King of Cards, then Specter of Torment, then Shovel of Hope, then Plague of Shadows. Yeah, and that would be yeah. chronological order. 
I don't know. I just love being able to talk about that kind of stuff. I like, I love, I just love all the lore that's like involved in Shovel Knight and like big like series of like epic games and book series like this. It's like so cool. Yeah, if you're getting into it though, pick up Shovel of Hope. You can't go wrong with the original. Well, get, sure. tre- get treasure, get trove. treasure trove, and then and then you'll then have you them, play them all. Then you'll have them all. Yeah, then it's just a matter of of you know finding the time. You know, you can. These are the kinds of the games too. You can you can rush through them as fast as you can, and still you're going to get quite a bit of content. I think. Or you can do like I do and just really take your time, find everything, try to 100%. And then once you've beaten a campaign, do it again, a new game plus mode. And uh, then you can really rack up the hours. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. And there's, there's an awful lot to to enjoy in these games. Um, so what's it been like to see the fan reaction to the game? You know, going back to when, it, you know, obviously you had a, a great successful Kickstarter to get things started. And then the game finally comes out great positive reviews and word of mouth and that continues to this day with all the campaigns and like you said there's there's this uh, very dedicated fan community that that loves to dig into all the little details about the mythology and and the actual uh, gameplay so I, I gotta imagine it's pretty rewarding you know after spending you know years kind of by yourselves in isolation putting this out there to see that so many people really appreciated it i i, I mean absolutely yeah. I, I think i think it's amazing that fans have you know, uh, come along with us for so many different, you know, so many adventures over so many years, still enthusiastic about, you know, the lore of each of the campaigns and all the characters still asking questions every day, you know, about what what's Plague Knight's favorite right. flavor of ice cream? Right. Like, would, Plague what, eat, would Plague Knight eat granola <laughs> right. bars or if or what? Or what, right. what it's like, no, he loves it like <laughs> soda, things, like diet yeah. soda. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, like, what's I've seen a lot of hot debate helmets. on like what are they animals exactly? Or yeah. Right. Everyone makes <laughs> the characters their own as well, right? Like as you know, like especially on social media, it's like there's it's like this whole world of it's like this whole world of shovel knight is like alive in in ways that are beyond just the games you know there's so there's just so much surrounding it it's just awesome and and the fun thing too is that we can't really answer every question because maybe we don't always we don't know, know but sometimes it's like it's okay to have your own head cannon or helmet cannon in this case, uh-huh, right? Very good. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's like that's half the fun. Yes, yeah, it sure is. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, it's really, really rewarding, and and it shows like going to I don't know, going to PAX and going to E three and seeing people's reactions and getting just people asking questions about the game or saying, oh, this is sharing a part that they that they enjoyed or yeah. t- even talking about the gameplay stuff like getting all the feats or this was a level that I really liked or this was a mechanic that was really fun for me. Um, it's we spend so much time obsessing over all the little details of everything that when people notice those details and like appreciate them or like or like get it then it's very tremendously satisfying yes makes mm-hmm. it all worth it yeah it's always i mean it's all worth it it's like all it's really it's just, it's just good. <laughs> we, we again we have the yeah. best fans shovel yeah. knight fans are are definitely incredible yeah Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Speaking of the fans, back to the next uh, fan question. Zephyr Law wants to know, how painful was it to keep it a secret that Shovel Knight was an assist trophy in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? Oh, man. Uh, very, very <laughs> painful. Very painful. Yeah, very painful. Well, you know, we had, ever since Shovel Knight came out, we got questions like that, right? Like, Shovel Knight and Smash, Shovel Knight and Smash. And so we were we we're just very used to already saying there's no plan, there's no information, there's nothing to say, yeah. there's no information. So w- even after we found out, we could just keep towing that line of like, I don't know, I don't know, or oh, yeah, that sure would be cool. What would you, you know, what would you like to see? Right. Or what What do you think would be in there? Um, we're, all, we're all such big Smash fans here too, that it was like really easy for us to just, you know, nonstop thinking about what it would be like and yeah 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 how amazing it is yeah it was really uh it was really dream come true. yeah it really is um but keeping it a secret was was pretty tough i remember i remember at one point it was like such a secret that even in the office we were like no we, we can't talk right. about it to yeah, each other even, right. right we weren't allowed to talk about it to each other we weren't <laughs> allowed to talk i mean it was just like very it was like very very secretive um so yeah, it was, it was really hard. And, that, and then finally, even, even like now, or like even after it, even after it was announced, I still feel a little like, oh wait, <laughs> I, oh, yeah, right. Are we allowed to like talk about this? <laughs> Just because it's been yeah. out for like a year. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was, 
it was crazy. That was just what a what an unbelievable thing. It was a great surprise. And and the only other um, person I know who's as big a fan of Shovel Knight as me is, is my son, who's nine. And, and uh, oh, cool. You know, it's, uh, I'm a proud gamer dad that he's he's beaten every campaign. Wow, and, uh, that's, that's amazing. amazing. I can't believe. Yeah. Wow. I can't believe that. That's whoa. That's yeah, incredible. going back to the Wii U. So he was younger when he first started, but he just and it was it was this weird thing where I thought, you know, it kind of looks like. This is a game that kind of harkens back to the games that I enjoyed when I was a kid. I don't know if him being, you know, a, a new generation will connect with it as well. But, you know, I really saw how universal the game was because it became one of his, his favorites. And and um, and and so it's just something we've enjoyed playing together. What console do you both uh, prefer playing it on? Like 3DS or Wii U or? On Nintendo Switch now, for sure. I mean, we played it on Wii U and, and Nintendo 3DS before. Yeah. Uh, but ever since Nintendo Switch came out, we've just played everything on that. And we, we restarted with brand new saves, obviously, yeah. and enjoyed replaying through the parts we'd already done before. Um, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the cool things that, you know, I was going to say that, you know, I got to show him when, when the assist trophy was, was revealed for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I got to, like, show him that video and, like, see him get super excited just like I was when I saw it. And then... Every time that we've seen um, the character appear, and in, in, in the character's been in, I guess, kind of guest appear, made guest appearances in lots of indie games. Definitely. And, um, you know, he's, he's always been really excited about that. He loved, he lo he's also a big fan of Just Shapes and Beats. So oh, cool. together, we're always kind of on the lookout for that next kind of, where's Shovel Knight going to pop up next? Yeah, you never know where he's going to show up yeah. next. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, there he is? <laughs> yeah, that ha yeah, that happens. Uh, uh, that, that's happened to me several times. Like, uh, like we forget that he's in a game. Right. And then this, he appears. It's yeah. like, ah, whoa. Well, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, right. Too. Yeah, I forgot he's here you too. Get track of your kid. Yeah. <laughs> what, what has been the general approach? I mean, it seems like you guys are just very, um, you know, uh, up for working with with different teams and kind of, uh, you know, um, kind of cross promoting in that way. Is that something you guys were actively seeking, or do a lot do a lot of people generally just come up to you because they're they're kind of fans of Shovel Knight, or how does that how did it work that Shovel Knight became such a a, a prolific video game character? Uh, well, in in the beginning, when we were running the Kickstarter, that was kind of like a big thing with Kickstarters, right? Like when the campaigns were running concurrently with another Kickstarter campaign, you would do like a character swap and be like, hey, guess what? This character is going to be, and now Shovel Knight's going to be in here. Uh, and so that spirit of sharing and having cameos in one another's games has been built into the DNA of Shovel Knight, I think, since the, yeah, since the very beginning. Uh, you, as you would say the precedent was set during the Kickstarter. I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then since then it's just been, I, I don't know, I think once once Shovel Knight became known as a character that would appear in right. as cameos, <laughs> right. then more people would come out of the woodwork and ask if he would cameo in their game. And generally people have had such cool pitches and cool ideas and the the representation of shovel knight has always been so so neat that and i don't know we're we're big shovel knight fans here right and we always wanted shovel knight to be a character that would exist beyond just his own game and be like a brand that you know you could have shovel knight cereal and, sho and shovel knight bed sheets and, right. sh and shovel knight cameoing in a bunch of games and i don't know shovel knight t t movies and tv shows and comic books and toys and I I just the same way that super mario was when we were growing up like you i could you could just get inundated with mario and the, i just wanted just wanted to live it and breathe it and eat it with nintendo cereal system so it's like having <laughs> having i mean seriously yeah yeah having shovel knight be like that kind of character has been kind of in our plans from the beginning i remember when uh nintendo Mario cereal came out a couple of years ago. Like a bunch of us in the oh, office yeah, ran right. to the local grocery stores, like looking at the shelves, <laughs> trying to find as many boxes as we could. Yeah, I think we still have a few on our desks, like right. in the office. Don't eat it. No, don't eat it. Yeah, it won't be good. Anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, as far as cameos go, like uh, an another really fun thing too is to see all the different artistic interpretations of Shovel Knight every time we get a pitch. Like we've seen everything from like tiny, even lo like lower res pixel versions of Shovel Knight right. than you know, the original game and also like giant, you know, hulking buff chunky shovel knight, yeah, chunky knight, shovel yeah. knights with like deep voices. It's just it's really cool to see the the spectrum yeah. of styles. Yeah, it's like he could be Shovel Knight could be like a lot of different types of character and so to see him go in a bunch of different directions has been really satisfying as well yeah absolutely and you know you talked a little bit about um kind of seeing shovel knight in different areas whether it's 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 merch and things like that my favorite that i've seen so far obviously is the amiibo of and course. you know alongside king of cards 
I was happy to get the three pack that included Spectre Knight, Plague Knight, and King Knight. Yes. And then previously you'd, you'd had Shovel Knight, obviously, and then there was a Gold Shovel Knight that yeah. came out yeah, recently too. So yeah, yeah. So so that was great. And you know, usually Amiibo kind of come directly from Nintendo. So you know, how does it feel to kind of be one of the only other people outside of Nintendo to kind of add to that collection? Uh, well, it's a it's a tremendous honor. First off, uh, yeah, we were I, I believe Shovel Knight was the first third party amiibo, and so um, you know that it was all a very secretive process. And we I guess we weren't sure if there was going to be like a bunch of third party amiibo or if there like who who else might even be involved. Um, and so it was just really surprising that that we were able to have that opportunity and that we could go through the process of making like a toy like a like a 3d statue and it was just like ha having the amiibo functionality work within the game it was just like uh <laughs> <laughs> one of our it, artists yeah, just, yeah, just sorry. making goofy faces at us um yeah it was <laughs> it was just it was just I don't know. It was, a, it was a tremendous honor. It was a, just a tremendous honor. And having a real life Shovel Knight amiibo that works with the game that you could actually put on your N Nintendo Switch and he zaps in there is like, yeah. uh, I. No, it's it's indescribably yeah. cool. Like I'm looking at the I'm looking at the amiibo yeah, just sitting on here, right in front of us, yeah, and yeah. just going through the process of making them and how cool they look, and having Shovel Knight series amiibo with a base that's like specifically designed to be Shovel Knight, and all the cool content like Custom Knight and the co-op and the amiibo fairies. I mean, a bunch like, of us are amiibo collectors too. Like we've got all of them at home, and and just to have a Shovel Knight, uh, well, to have five different Amiibo yeah. as part of that collection is just, uh, it's astounding to us. Yeah. I think we're really proud too of a lot of the uh, the content that the Amiibo unlock in game, like uh, the original Shovel Knight Amiibo unlocks the co-op content yeah, in Custom Shovel of Hope, Knight. Custom Knight. Um, they unlock fairy uh, companion characters that are really fun to play with. New costumes that, awesome. yeah, that are, that you could use in Shovel Knight Showdown as well. So it's like the Amiibo do, do a lot they of do a lot. really, cool stuff as well so i'd say we're pretty proud of that we're just proud we're just proud and we're proud yeah, we're proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great i'm a big amiibo collector myself so it's it's always you know it's always nice to have i mean I, I like to get all the amiibo kind of regardless but when it's it's characters that are favorites of mine it's always especially rewarding to kind of add those to the shelf so now you've been you know you've been through years of working on on uh on shovel knight treasure trove and now you're finally kind of you know, closing the book on that game and moving forward to other things. I know you've previously announced um, that Shovel Knight Dig is coming up. I believe that's this year. Is there anything more you can tell us about that or any kind of update? Well, we don't have a release date yet. The game is still in development. Yeah, heavy, um, heavily, mm -hmm. heavily in development. Yeah, like, but we we are super excited about it. Like, as we mentioned, Shovel Knight, the, sh the Shovel Knight saga of games has come to a close within Treasure Trove, but we hope for many adventures in the future uh, with Shovel Knight. You know, hopefully this... Uh, we'll be able to continue making Shovel Knight games for a really long time, and Dig is is most likely going to be the next one that comes out. Um, it's been playable at conventions yeah. already. The reaction was like really, really great. We we get to have a new presentation for Shovel Knight with like totally different visuals mm -hmm. style. And uh, I mean, we we've been working with uh, with Nitro, who's our partners in this, and they're bringing like so many cool creative ideas to the table. Nitro like came into this with such a like a powerful understanding of what makes a Shovel Knight yeah. game feel like a Shovel Knight game. Definitely. And the, rep the representations of the characters and the environments and everything is just, it's yeah. been great fun to work with them. Yeah, so having just having a Shovel Knight game that really puts a twist on all of it is gonna be really, really neat. And we're just gonna make sure that it's like the absolute best game that it can be. And it, it, may, t it may take a while, uh, but, it's all looking really, really good so far. I, I can't wait to show everyone what's what's coming up. We've yeah. also got Shovel Knight Dungeon Duels, the board game we're making with Panda Cult. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's amazing as well. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. I hadn't heard of that one yet. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a whole board game with three D sculpts and like uh, it's a, just a big massive thing that you could actually play like in in a in a side scrolling fashion the way that the video game is played. It's like the whole board like moves step by step. Yep. Lots of Shovel Knight. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So Shovel Knight fans shouldn't worry that that the, the, the well is now dry after Treasure Trove. Definitely not. There's We're going to keep on making Shovel Knight stuff forever and ever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's the great. Oh, we have it here. This is yeah. This is now legally binding. Yeah, unless we go out of business, I don't know. Hopefully that will happen. Well, that's great. Thanks so much. Um, I mean, I could really talk about Shovel Knight endlessly, um, but I do want to quickly um, uh, get to a couple of segments that we have every episode. If you guys don't mind sticking around, sure. Cool. All right. Well, next up is Pros Picks. And as usual, this is where we just talk about games that we've each been enjoying lately on Nintendo Switch. Uh, I know you guys probably stay pretty busy developing your own games, but is there anything you've played, in, you know, in recent weeks and months that uh, that uh, has really caught your eye? I've been playing a lot of Dark Souls Remastered on Nintendo Switch. Oh, yeah. That's oh, one yeah? thing that I I'm a huge Dark Souls fan and having that on Switch and as like a portable edition that I can carry around with me and just always have Dark Souls in my pocket. Yeah. There's even that Solaire Amiibo. Oh, right. It's so cool. Like, yeah, that that really excites me for sure. I can never get enough of that. Series. Yeah. Have you do you new game plus that? Like yeah. how many new game pluses have you got in Dark Souls? In remastered only I've, I'm on one. OK, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you can go up to like seven. Yeah. But at a certain point, I'm just like, all right, I'm going to make a new character this time. Right. I was playing uh, Untitled Goose Game. Oh yeah, yeah. We, I, yeah, oh, I, was, yeah. I was really enjoying playing that, and we we got all the way through Untitled Goose Game on the on the big TV. That was really fun. It just what a it was like simple and enjoyable and beatable in a weekend, and just like I don't know, it was like the perfect little game to just to just have fun with. I really liked that one. Um, We're playing Dragon Quest Eleven S also. Oh, yeah. Like all the new features and mm -hmm. the, the new orchestral soundtrack that was added to that edition on Switch mm -hmm. is just like f far superior than any other place you can play it. Right. So, yeah. Well, have you finished Music it? to have my you, ears. Have you finished it yet? I, on, uh, I, I'm, I, well, so finishing it, finishing a Dragon Quest game is a, is a tricky question because okay, I, I beat it. the boss. Right. But there's more, there's more. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I was like, Untitled Goose Game was like, I don't know, one, <laughs> one weekend, that was much easier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. the other, uh, we were playing uh, Killer Queen Black oh, yeah. on Nintendo Switch as well. And like, uh, Killer Queen, it's like, they're, this is like the first like home version of it, right? And being able to play it like with with four players on the Joy-Cons is like really, really neat. Um, Having that, having a big multiplayer game like that, I don't know. Maybe it's because when we were working on Shovel Knight Showdown, that was like a, f a fun thing. Just having like that couch co-op and being able to play Killer Queen was super cool as well. Yeah, those are some great titles and and some of the ones that a lot of people around here at our office have been playing too. Sadly, I'm still really behind in in getting my quest going on Dragon Quest XI S, but so far so yeah. good. <laughs> um, it's one of those games that you can just kind of you know sit. Right, I'm, you don't have to gu gulp the whole thing down. I'm yeah. like scared to jump in. Yeah, it seems like it's just going to be like a hundred hours. Yeah, it is, but but it's a <laughs> hundred hours, hours, hours that are worth. Yeah, of fun. It's right. worth it. Right. It's a great experience. The deeper you go, the more fun it gets. Well, uh, since we've already talked quite a bit about King of Cards, um, I won't go too much in, into detail on this, but that's you know obviously I think people can guess based on the conversation so far. Uh, that's what I spent most of my December playing and uh, greatly enjoying. Thank you. Um, also, yeah, and uh, and as I said, my son and I, uh, that was kind of our holiday game. You know, we were both playing the game on our own Nintendo Switch that's systems. That's so cool. And kind of seeing where we are, and it was became a little bit competitive. Whoa. And then we both started... We both started playing New Game Plus, and then we were like, he was constantly bragging that he was farther ahead, but he was skipping a lot of optional levels, and I was kind of, you know, checking every box before I moved on to the next oh, map, yeah. so uh, that was fun. Were you were you uh, both playing Joustus, the card game? Yeah. Um, you know, Joustus, I was going to mention this before, I was a little worried about playing Joustus going into it, because I'm usually not the best at, at like, card games or really strategizing in that way. But after pretty quickly into the game, it just kind of clicked and I got it and started like being pretty successful at it. And then that became a big part of what I enjoyed about uh, the campaign, especially near the end where you get some really powerful cards and you can just go back, especially to the earlier people you played against and just kind of wreck them and take their cards. Definitely. That <laughs> yeah, was a definitely. lot of fun. That's how I like to play. You go go all the way to the end, get the good cards and then go back and just trounce everybody in like world one. Yeah. Yeah. It's great when you, when you, you know, you start new game plus and you get to keep all your cards and I had gotten 100% of the cards the Whoa, first playthrough. Well done. So yeah. So I go into the new game plus and uh, you know, I'm playing those first beginner tutorial type, uh, you know, competitors and it's just, 
it's over before it can even yeah. begin. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm I'm glad. You know, we were a little bit worried about Joustus and like how it would be received because when you're playing Shovel Knight, you don't necessarily you're not thinking like, oh, I want to play a card game necessarily, right? You're there like probably for the action mm -hmm. and the platforming. So we we worked really hard to make sure that Joustus was fun, but also that it was optional. But it's really great to hear when people wade into it, step a toe in, and then really, really get into it, and it just like becomes a becomes a big part of why they enjoy the game. So that's really we that's really cool. We yeah, hope it clicks eventually. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want an actual physical Joustus that deck. Be, if I that's know it'd be cards. so cool. In the cards, no pun intended. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and uh, and then just a couple other quick things I want to kind of give a shout out to that I've enjoyed recently. I've been getting back into Super Smash Brothers Ultimate a lot. You know, trying to. You know, whenever there's like new announcements for upcoming uh, Fighters Pass characters and things yeah. like that, that always kind of gets me back into trying to finish off my spirit card collection and things like that. Um, finally started the Picnic Panic DLC for the Messenger, oh, which yeah. I really enjoyed cool. and meant yeah. to get to yeah, last Messenger's year. One, one game it's that a really I would fun definitely game. add to my list too. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm good friends with some of the developers on the game and the, oh, yeah. it's, it's a, a ton of fun to play. The music's wonderful, so... Yeah, Messenger's great. Yeah, when I first saw that game announced, it, I, I looked at that as being kind of like, a, you know, I had kind of done everything there was to do with Shovel Knight at, at that time. And I thought, well, maybe this can be the next type of game that scratches a similar itch. And, the, and it ends up being a very different type of game to Shovel Knight, but but still very good. And, and uh, yeah, I think if people like good side-scrolling action games, uh, that's definitely another, another, another top pick. For sure. All right, well, now we're going to have some fun. Uh, I hope it's fun for you guys. Uh, we're going to go to the Warp Zone quiz. Whoa. Uh -oh, uh, Warp Zone. Yep, this is where we uh, I give you, we try to guess three games. I'm going to give you clues for a game that came out 10 years ago in January, one that came out 20 years ago this month, and another one that came out 30 years ago. Whoa. All and, right, um, I'm ready. 30 years ago. I'm give you a few clues. <laughs> All right, here we go. Game number one. Um, the clues are Grasshopper Manufacturer developed, or sorry, I should first say this is the 10 years ago game. Okay, so 10 years ago in January of 2010, Grasshopper Manufacturer developed a sequel to a fan-favorite action game for Wii in which he used a beam katana to take on a series of crazy, colorful assassins and could make extra money by doing jobs like delivering pizza and collecting coconuts. I Any know. guesses? Sean. Yeah. That's No More Heroes 2. Yeah. That's right. No, no More Heroes 2. Got Desperate it. Got struggle. It. <laughs> easy. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Come on. One for one. All right. Well, let's let's uh, let's ramp up the difficulty a little bit with more of a deep cut title. This is 20 years ago in January of 2000. And the clues are Nintendo developed and published a side scrolling action game for Game Boy Color that was an entry into a series of games normally published by Capcom in which you used your extending bionic claw to swing through Metroid style areas to reach and rescue Commander Joe. Any guesses? Oh, yeah. Um in 2000? It's slipping. It's at the tip of my tongue. Yeah. The follow-up to a fan favorite NES game. Yeah, but yeah. Again, this one was on Game Boy Color. I just don't know. I just don't know. It's Bionic Commando something. Bio, yeah, Bionic Commando. But Bionic, Bionic Commando what? Like. Yeah, yeah. Bionic Commando Elite Forces. Oh, <laughs> Elite, Elite Forces. Forces. Elite okay. Forces. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what it looks like. It's got yeah, a right. big sprite. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it was probably technically the follow-up to a Game Boy uh, um Bionic Commando title, but uh, yeah. most people obviously remember the, the NES, NES game. version. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely yeah. Cool. All right, good. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. And I even love Bionic right. Commando. Right. So that was like a, that was like a huge fail. Whoa, Sorry, yeah. Real stuff. <laughs> All right, now this is thirty years ago, in January of nineteen ninety, and Sean, you are prohibited from answering this question. Oh, what? Unless, unless Sandy cannot get it on his own. Oh man, oh, I was in nineteen ninety. I was like three, four. Okay. So you probably, you're the perfect age. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'll do my best. Maybe my uncle was playing it at the time. All right, here we go. The clues are Imagineering developed a hybrid platform puzzle game for NES that featured a cute, squishy character who loved jelly beans that developer WayForward would remake for Wii almost 20 years later. Any guesses? Is there a boy involved? <laughs> or a blob? <laughs> <laughs> there are. Whoa. Was that just a shot in the dark? That was really good. Boys Whoa. and blobs. I'm just going <laughs> to... Go with a random guess, boy in his blob. <laughs> That's Good it. Job. A boy in his blob, trouble on blob only. And Sean, you directed that the remake for that game, didn't you? That's right. Yeah, I did. I directed the remake. Look, we're looking at we're looking we're looking at, we're right looking at the NES cartridge <laughs> right now. David Crane's a boy in his blob, trouble on blobalonia. Yeah, that was like my directorial <laughs> debut at Way Forward. 
Yeah. Wow. What a, that's a blast from the past. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that was, yeah. That I was, really enjoyed both the original game and the, uh, and the Wii, uh, uh, the Wii game. So thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, geez. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank David Crane for the first one. You know, he's, I had nothing, <laughs> yeah. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> All right, well, that was a strong Warp Zone performance, you two. So, well done. Wow, two out of three. Wow. Uh, it's yep. like a D plus. And now uh, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna, yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna finish off as we normally do with game forecast. Uh, this is just where we take a quick look at some key Nintendo Switch games that are coming out soon. I'm just gonna run through the list here. On January 28th, we have Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition. Oh yeah, from Cardboard I've Computer. Been, yeah, I've been meaning to play that. I can't. Yeah, I can't wait. Awesome. I like seriously can't wait. Yeah. All right. And then on February 4th, we have the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance Tactics from Bonus Bonus XP. Then on February 14th, you can celebrate Valentine's Day with Snack World: The Dungeon Crawl Gold from Level Five. Ooh, then on that. February 20th, yeah, February 20th, we have Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition from Capcom. Ooh. And on February 25th, we have Mega Man Zero ZX Legacy Collection from Capcom and Samurai Showdown from SNK. Yes. And then I want to peek ahead just a little bit farther because um, in the not too distant future here on March 6th, we have Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX from That's Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then on March 20th, um, Doom 64 from Bethesda Softworks and Animal Crossing New Horizons from Nintendo. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Doom 64 is there's a Doom 64 is coming out again. <laughs> I mean that's an incredible yep. that's an incredible game. It has yeah. like all new levels, like all new graphics. I remember like I remember getting that game on N64 and being just like so so impressed with like how everything was different. It was like totally it's like totally you can, you all can brand revitalize new. your nostalgia for yeah. it. Oh man, that's so cool. That's like a that's like a really great lineup. Yeah. Yeah, that's some cool stuff. I mean, I I'm really looking forward to Animal Crossing New Horizons cuz it's one of those games that so many people in my family are really looking forward to and they don't necessarily always play a lot of the same games I'm playing, right. so it's going to be great to kind of visit each other's you know, houses or whatever, and just enjoy that together. Yeah, that series and is, then, um, is fun for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And then Devil May Cry 3 is a game I really enjoyed when it first came out back in the day, but I, I didn't play too far into it, and I kind of got my butt kicked by it a little bit. Yeah. So I, I want to give it another shot. It yeah. seemed really cool. Yeah, what's special about the special edition? Do we, <laughs> do we, do we know? Like, I remember, you know, I remember there was like, there were so many differences in the difficulty between the American and the Japanese version that the American version was just like so hard. Yeah, that's what I remember it just being very challenging. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I ever learned the combat system deep enough to really um, keep up. But, uh, but at the same time, it was so stylish and just so cool and over the top Definitely. fun with the action yeah. that I think I'm going to put a little bit more effort in this time. Cool. Well, Sean and Sandy... Both, thank you so much for coming on the show. I can't wait to see what is next in store for Shovel Knight, and we'll have to come back and talk about it. Yeah, thanks, Yeah, Chris. absolutely, we will. Yeah, and thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, we'll, fun. yeah, we'll definitely keep on, keep on keeping on and working real hard on everything that we got going over here. Lots more Shovel Knight to come. Well, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for this episode of Nintendo Power Podcast. If you have any comments or questions you'd like us to consider answering on the show, you can email us at nintendopowerpodcast at noa.nintendo.com. Also, we always appreciate it if you can leave a review, and be sure to subscribe so you get new episodes as soon as they're ready. Thanks for listening, and keep playing with power.